Welcome to Module 3 of the free reinforcement learning course from Neuralnet.ai. I'm your host, Phil Tabor. If you're not subscribed, make sure to do that now so you don't miss the rest of the course. In the previous video, we learned about a special type of process called the Markov decision process. There, each state depends only on the previous state and the action taken by the agent. This leads to the recursive relationship between the agent's estimate of returns at successive time steps. This relationship extends to the agent's estimate of the value function, which is given by the Bellman equation. As we covered in Module 1, reinforcement learning, for the most part, boils down to maximizing this value function. However, it's not always so simple. Surprise, surprise. Just like you and I have trade-offs in real life, reinforcement learning agents are faced with similar considerations. Should the agent take the action that it knows will immediately provide the most reward, or should it explore other actions to see if it can do better? This conundrum is known as the explore-exploit dilemma, and every reinforcement learning algorithm has to deal with this. Fortunately, there are many solutions, and we'll cover some of them here. One such solution is the idea of optimistic initial values. When the agent starts playing the game, it has to use some initial estimate for the value or action value function. This estimate is totally arbitrary, but if we know something about the reward structure beforehand, we can actually initialize it in such a way as to encourage exploration. Suppose we have an environment like our grid world in the video on creating our own reinforcement learning environment. In that environment, the agent receives a reward of minus one for each step and so the expected returns are always negative or zero, no matter of the state of the environment or the action the agent takes. So what would happen if we tell the agent that the value of all the state action pairs are positive or even zero? On the first move, the agent picks some action randomly because all the actions look identical. It receives a reward of minus one and updates its estimates accordingly. So it's a bit disappointed. It was expecting chocolate cake and got a mud pie. The next time it encounters that state, it will take a different action because the other actions have an estimate of zero reward for that state, which is better than the negative reward it actually received. This means that the agent ends up exploring all the state action pairs many times as each update makes the agent's estimate more and more accurate. We never had to explicitly tell the agent to take exploratory actions because its greed drove it to take exploratory actions after it became disappointed with whatever action it just took. Again, this is called optimistic initial values. Another feasible solution is to spend some portion of the time choosing random actions and the majority of the time choosing greedy actions. This is called an epsilon greedy strategy and it's the one we employ the most. It's quite robust as we can change the random parameter over time so that the agent converges onto a nearly pure greedy strategy. The proportion of the time the agent spends exploring is a hyperparameter of the problem and we typically call it epsilon. One potential strategy is to start out completely randomly and then use some decay function to gradually increase the proportion of greedy actions the agent takes. The form of this function isn't critically important. It can be linear, a power law, or really any other function. Whether or not the agent converges to a purely greedy strategy is going to depend on the problem. For simple environments like the grid world, where we know the optimal solution beforehand, it makes quite a bit of sense to converge to a purely greedy strategy. However, with a game like Space Invaders, a popular environment from the OpenAI gym, there are so many variables that it's hard to be sure the agent has settled on the truly optimal strategy. The solution there is to leave epsilon at some small but finite value so the agent is occasionally taking exploratory actions to test its understanding of the environment. All of this discussion has made a very important assumption. We've assumed the agent only uses a single policy. The agent uses both the same policy to update its estimate of the value function as well as to generate actions. There's no rule this has to be the case. In fact, an agent can leverage two policies. It can use one policy to generate actions and then use the data that generates to update the value function for some other policy. This is called off-policy learning, and this is precisely what we use in Q-learning. 
The agent uses some epsilon greedy strategy to generate steps in the Markov chain, which is the sequence of state, action, rewards, and resulting states, and then uses that data to update the estimate of the action value function for the purely greedy action. In effect, we're using an epsilon greedy strategy to update our estimate of the purely greedy strategy. Needless to say, this works quite well, and it's something we'll come back to in later modules when we get to Monte Carlo methods and temporal difference learning. That's it for now. Reinforcement learning agents seek to maximize their total reward, but face a dilemma of whether to maximize current reward or take exploratory steps with suboptimal actions in the hope of optimizing long-term rewards. One solution is to bias the agent's initial estimates in such a way that it encourages exploration before settling on a purely greedy strategy. Another is to spend some proportion of the time exploring and the majority of the time exploiting the best known action. And finally, the agent can leverage two policies, one to generate data and the other to update the estimate of the action value or value function. In the next module, we're going to get to dynamic programming class of model-based reinforcement learning algorithms. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the remainder of this course, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.